The word graph has at least two meanings in mathematics. In elementary mathematics and calculus, we all know the word graph usually refers to graph of a function. For example, these plots are all graphs. But in a mathematician's term, a graph is a collection of points and frequently lines that connect some or all of the points. These are all examples of mathematical graphs. It is possible for a graph to have no connecting line. The existence of a connecting line is not necessary in a graph. Each of the point or node is called a vertex, and each of the connecting line is called an edge. A group's Twitter network can also be represented as a graph, where each vertex represents a Twitter user and each edge represents that the two users are connected or follow each other in Twitter. <clears throat> Apart from the Twitter network, we can have other concrete examples of graph such as the retweet network. Let's say, for example, we have this tweet from Paul Halmos. The only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. Now we can represent this tweet as a single vertex. And we all know that a tweet can be retweeted by another user. And the retweet can again be retweeted by other users. This whole network of retweet is represented by this large graph. A neural network, which is used for artificial intelligence or statistical learning, is also visualized as a graph, where we have the input vertices, output vertices, and the hidden layers in between. The structure of neural network imitates the structure of our brain's neuronal network. Now let us define graph in a more rigorous or abstract approach. A simple graph is defined to consist two finite sets, the set V, that is the set of vertices, and the set E, set of edges. An edge is actually an unordered pair of two vertices. For example, the set V might be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of these are vertices, and the set E might be the set of edges connecting A to E, B to C, B to E, and so on. Together, V and E make the graph G. For notational convenience, instead of representing an edge as u, v, we denote this simply as uv. To see what I mean, in the following examples, we write the unordered pair of vertices simply as shown. This makes it easier for us in writing the set of edges. We can obtain similar graph structures by altering our definition in various ways. By replacing our set E with a set of ordered pairs of vertices, we call this a directed graph, or D-graph. Each edge has a specific orientation or direction. This is a practical application of D-graph. We can have a map of flight routes, and this is the data of the number of flights through the routes. After some time of data collection, we can say that these are the probabilities of a random person choosing a travel route from a country to another country. You can see here the total numbers from an airport accrued to 1. 
the probability is distributed among different routes originating from that country. This model is also called Markov chain. Compared to simple graph, of course, directed graph can provide us more detailed information. But simple graphs are easier to study. Now, we will get to know some characteristics of a simple graph. In graph theory, the total number of vertices is defined to be the order of the graph. As you can see in this example, the order is 7. The order of a graph G is therefore the cardinality of the set V. The total number of edges is named as the size of the graph. The size here is 8. The size of a graph G is the cardinality of the set E. Given two vertices, if together they form an edge, then they are said to be adjacent. Given a graph with some order, the minimum size is obviously 0, and the maximum size is obviously the order combination of 2, because the number of possible edges given a set of n vertices is of course the number of ways we can choose two vertices. For a vertex, the vertices adjacent to it are its neighbors. Here is an illustration of neighbors for some vertices. We can introduce ourselves to another definition, that is the neighborhood. The neighborhood of a vertex V is the set of vertices adjacent to V or the set of neighbors of V. The degree of a vertex is the number of edges it has, that is, the cardinality of its neighborhood. So, those are some characteristics of a simple graph G. Now, after learning some definitions, let us turn to the so-called first theorem of graph theory. In a graph G, the sum of all of the degrees of the vertices is equal to twice the number of edges. Here is the proof. That is simply because each edge contributes to exactly two vertices, meaning that it adds degree plus one to a vertex and adds degree plus one to the other vertex. So obviously, the total degrees of a graph G must be two times the size of G. Some other important terms in graph theory are walk and path in a graph G. This is an example of a walk in a graph G from the vertex V1 to V7. You can see each edge as a bridge or road to go from a vertex to another vertex. For a walk, we are allowed to visit the same vertex more than once. This is another example from V7 to V4. There can be more than one walk from V7 to V4 as you can see here. Now, mathematically, a walk in a graph is a sequence of not necessarily distinct vertices, where each wi is a vertex and each consecutive terms form an edge. When all the vertices in a walk are distinct, we call it a path. This is an example of a path in a graph G, from V8 to V1. So, path is actually an efficient walk.
This is another one, a short path. We can have more than one path from V13 to V9. So, a path is definitely also a walk, but a walk does not necessarily mean a path. Interestingly, every walk contains a path. Look at these examples, where a green trail means that the edge is traveled more than once. Every walk from a starting vertex to an end vertex contains a path, from the same starting vertex to the same ending vertex. You can see that no matter how long the walk is, no matter how complicated it is, there will always be a path in that walk. But notice that the path does not necessarily mean the shortest path or the most efficient path. It is only said that each walk contains a path. Now this fact is summarized in Theorem 2. In a graph G with vertices U and V, every UV walk contains a UV path. To understand the proof, let us look at this example. We have this graph and we have this walk from vertex V1 to V11. To find a path in this walk, we just look for repeating vertex. Start with the ending vertex. If the ending vertex is repeated, then we remove the edges between the first one and the last one. If there is still repeating vertex, then we do the same thing again, that is, we remove the edges between the first occurring vertex and the last one. In other words, we shorten the journey, make it more efficient. If there is still another repeating vertex, we do the same thing again and again until all vertices are distinct and we have our path. This is a path contained in this walk. So those are some introduction about graph theory. If you want to learn more about it, Please support this channel by subscribing and liking the videos.